Hey, sports fans. I got a 19... No, take that back. I think this is a 2002 Club Car DS. And you can get on it, start driving around, it runs fine, but then it kills out as soon as it gets warm. After doing a little bit of research, I found that it's probably, most likely, the ignition coil. Now, from what I've seen, these ignition coils are usually about a hundred bucks, but I found this one online for 27. So we're going to try that. Of course, it always makes you wary of, you know, buying the cheapest parts, but I tend to go that route. I, I like the excitement of knowing whether they're going to work or not. But the problem is, is that in order to do this job, oh, well, I guess you have to take quite a bit of stuff apart. I've seen uh, videos where guys remove the whole entire golf cart body. I really don't want to do that. It looks like removing the exhaust is unavoidable. I got two bolts there where it goes to the engine block. One bolt there and there's like a hose clamp on the muffler. Um, that should allow that to come off. Then I'll have to remove this uh, cover over the throttle linkage and see how much of the carburetor I have to take off in order to do this job. It's looking like I have to remo remove this uh, cover here and then this engine shroud. I think what I'll start off with is uh, trying to remove this exhaust. Alright, to begin with, that's the top of the muffler there. And you can see right where the light is shining, that's uh, the worm gear for a hose clamp. It's nothing more than really a hose clamp that holds the muffler tight to the rest of the machine, so we'll loosen that up. Alright, we also have a bolt that's right there that we have to remove. And we have two uh, studs with nuts on them that we got to remove where the exhaust attaches to the engine block. Okay, at first I thought I was going to remove that hose clamp with a stubby screwdriver, but you just can't get any force on the screwdriver the way that's in there, so I went with a quarter inch drive ratchet handle with a 516 socket on it. That loosened up pretty well. Um, you're probably going to have to uh, loosen up the, that hose clamp that holds the muffler on quite a bit. Okay, this one uh, bolt that holds the exhaust to the top of the engine here. I'm 13 millimeter socket with a 3 inch extension. That's all you need to take that one out. Okay, next we'll go for the bolts that uh, hold the exhaust to the engine block itself. And uh, those are also 13 millimeter nuts on some studs. Uh, the one on the front side, we can use a 13 millimeter socket with a, with a three inch extension. And uh, on the other side, we will go underneath the exhaust pipe with a six inch extension. All right, and the uh, exhaust stud on the back side, we're gonna go underneath the exhaust pipe with a six inch extension. And once again, using a 13 millimeter socket. Those two nuts removed, we should be able to remove the exhaust system itself. Probably going to take a little bit of finagling because that uh, hose clamp is still going around the muffler. But uh, we'll see what we can do. Try to work her loose. Also, there's a couple of lock washers behind those nuts, so it just fell off that I'm going to have to get. But there it goes, and hopefully I'll be able to get the rest of the exhaust system out of the way. All right, that exhaust system came out fairly easy after I had uh, those uh, three, that one bolt, the two nuts uh, removed in that hose clamp that went right in this area here, loosened up. First I slid it out uh, toward the uh, right hand side of the cart to make this part of the pipe clear the exhaust port and then I slid it forward, uh, kind of snaking it out but it, it came out easy enough as you moved it forward toward the front of the cart and uh, was able to lift it out through this area here. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to see how much of the carburetor and linkage we have to remove. I'm going to start by removing this plastic cover right here. It looks like that takes some very small, either Allen or Torx uh, bits. All right, after you remove these two screws, I don't, they're a Torx uh, head. I don't, I don't know what size. It's very small, okay? There's a lock nut here. It's a 10 millimeter with a washer. Okay, that just comes off like that. Then you just pull this plastic cover up off that bolt and then slide it forward, and then that comes off. Now at this point I'm going to see what it takes to remove this cover. Hopefully it's just a matter of 
taking off uh, these bolts here. Um, we will see what happens. I won't be able to video this while I'm taking these uh, screws out. It's going to take both hands, but I'll let you know what was involved once I get it done. Looking at this, I don't believe I'm going to be able to remove this shroud without removing this cover here first. So I'm going to remove them. There you have uh, Phillips head screws on them. There are four of them about 90 degrees apart. So there's a uh, noon, 3, 6, and 9 o'clock positions. All right. To get to the screw on that outer uh, kind of fin, screen, louvered, whatever you want to call it, housing, um, it's kind of difficult to get to. Um, got to reach quite a ways in and uh, we're going to need an extension okay to get to it and it's a Phillips head now let me just show you one of my old hillbilly tricks here I'll just take a regular Phillips head screwdriver bit I'll put it in a quarter inch socket and then to keep it on so it doesn't fall off I just tape it onto the socket and uh, that usually works pretty good all right, that worked pretty good. Turned out I did not need the universal joint in there, so I, I removed that, but uh, two extensions on a nut driver handle, and uh, that screw came out pretty well. Now I should be able to just pull this cover out, like so. That's all there is to that. Then one of my screws, the screw for the bottom, uh, at the six o'clock position, just fell into this tray that holds the motor. So I'll take that out so I don't lose it. <coughs> Now what I'm probably going to do now here is I'm going to remove this uh, shroud here and we'll see what we got going on at that point. All right, I'm working on removing this engine shroud here and there's, I believe, six bolts holding it on. Uh, those top bolts, there's one right underneath the bracket that holds on the starter generator. But fortunately, you don't have to remove that screw all the way because the, the two top screws on this shroud there's a slot in it. It's not just a hole. It's a slot. So all you actually have to do is loosen those top ones. There's also one here right behind, right between the oil filter and the engine block. So if you haven't changed your oil in a long time, this would be a good time to do so you can take that filter right off. I actually don't think too much oil would leak out even if you took this filter off without removing the drain plug because the filter is higher than the uh, oil pan. So if you need to have access to that bolt, you can just remove your oil filter. And I think you'll have a minimal amount of mess. You'll have some for sure. But... All right, I'm betting we're also going to have to remove this stud here that held on that uh, bracket, that uh, that plastic cover that went over the throttle bracket. So 10 millimeter uh, nut on that stud should make it come off. Yeah, that's all there was to that. Just turn it with a 10 millimeter wrench and the stud comes right out. All right, that last bolt is right behind this area here. And I might have to get kind of creative on how to get to that. Uh, let me see what I can figure out, and I'll get back to you. All right, this is what I proposed. That screw I got to get to to hold this saw, uh, that holds this shroud on, the screw I got to get to is almost directly behind this hole right here. Okay? Now that hole, this bolt went through it. It's probably a metric, but it's somewhere around a 5 16 bolt. Okay? So, what I propose to do is the hole that bolt, bolt went through is right there, right where I'm shining the light. And it's around a 5 sixteenths hole. I propose I gotta just drill that out to 3 eighths. And then hopefully my 3 quarter inch extension will fit right through that hole and then I can put my socket on on the other side and get that bolt out. Uh, that holds the shroud on. Otherwise, it's going to be take it, it's going to be taking off everything that holds this one piece of metal on. I just don't want to do all that. So let's see how it goes. All right. So what I want to do here is I want to just drill this one hole right here for about five sixteenths to three eighths, and then I should be able to stick my quarter inch uh, socket extension through that. All right, sports fans, that did it. Uh, wind up with the bolt pretty good. I had to put an extension on. Clipped an extension and a uh, what was it, uh, 10 millimeter socket on once I put this quarter inch uh, drive ratchet handle through the hole. But it, it worked pretty good. It got the job done. So, right down here, we can reach and get our socket extension. We'll just let that fall down. And now at this point, our shroud should come off. Might take a little finagling. Looks like I'm going to have to 
remove the oil filter to get this off. So it's it's a tight squeeze. I'm, if you were to remove this bolt here, we've already removed that bolt there. Remove that one there, and that one right there. I bet there'd be just enough room, just enough to get that flywheel uh, cover, engine shroud, whatever you want to call it, out of uh, where it is. Because it, it just barely won't, as it is, it just barely won't come. Okay. I mean, we're, we're just talking about a quarter of an inch. Another thing I thought I'd bring up here is, in order to get this, uh, I didn't have to do it to get it off, but I, I'm certain I'd have to do it to get, put it back on. So. I did it right now. I had to loosen up on this top cover here, near the valve cover. I had to loosen up that screw there. I didn't have to take it out, just loosen it up. And then on the other side, I had to loosen up this one screw that's right, let's see here, right below the exhaust port. I had to loosen that up. This one screw here with this ground wire on, you don't, and you don't have to take these out. All you have to do is loosen them. I had to loosen up this nut. The, where this ground wire goes, and then I also had to loosen up the nut behind it. And then underneath, in front of the engine where you can't see, there's another screw there, that, a bolt, whatever you want to call it, that you have to loosen up. Two of them, in fact. Two of them on the front. Right down underneath the valve cover there. There's two. All you have to do is loosen them to make this piece of tin loose enough where you'll be able to slide that flywheel cover back in when you reassemble it. Okay, sports fans. I decided to take this piece of metal off. There's only four bolts total holding it on and I had already removed one. Uh, if you do that, you can take that flywheel cover off. But not only that, we'll back up a step here. When we were removing this flywheel cover, if we would have removed this piece of metal here first, it would not only make taking the flywheel cover off possible, but it would also make it much easier to get that bottom bolt right there. Remember what trouble I had trying to take that thing off? put it back in here. We'll just take a look underneath here and just see how easy it is to see where that one screw went. Let me just kind of get her in place here. Now we'll look underneath here. Now I'm looking under the bottom of the card here, okay? And uh, right here is the flywheel shroud. Here is a leaf spring. It's going to make it hard to see because the leaf spring's in the way and the camera is going to autofocus on that. But uh, right back here, where I'm sticking my finger right below there, behind there, is where that bottom bolt on that uh, flywheel shroud is. And it would be, it would have been much easier to take off had I removed this piece of metal, which mounts right about there, taking that off in the first place. And like I said, there's only four bolts. And uh, you do that, and you can eliminate that drilling step where I had to put the socket uh, extension through the hole and then put the socket on the extension after I went there. It's going to make it much easier. It'll be totally worth uh, removing those four bolts because not only that, it's going to be, you'll be able to actually remove that flywheel cover. So the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to remove this uh, magneto coil, whatever you want to call it. Uh, like I said, I've seen on the internet 10 to 12 thousandths clearance there and I checked it before. It's at it's, it's 10 thousandths. So We'll set our new one at that. We'll take this one off and we'll set our new one at 10 thousandths clearance. There's really not much to change in these once you got this much of it apart. Um, there's just two screws holding on, right? One here, one there, and then this, uh, this is the kill wire, okay? When you turn your ignition off, that grounds that out and grounds out the coil. That's what kills the engine. And uh, there is one thing though, we're gonna have to use the spark plug boot off the old one because it doesn't come with a spark plug boot, the new coil. And also we're gonna have to, this gasket here, we're gonna have to put on the new spark plug wire. All right, that uh, ignition kill plug should unplug just like that. Okay, that's all there is to it. And then these two screws here, they have, num they have eight millimeter heads on them. 